WIFO-FM in Jessup. Two minutes after 8 o'clock. Here we are on this Wednesday morning, 20th day of April. It is now time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by First Southern Bank, Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, Murphy Builder Supply, and O'Quinnon Associates. Hi, I'm Mandy Yalmans. And I'm Raymond Brown with First Southern Bank. As your locally-owned community bank, we're here to help our community grow. Our customers are why we are here. You can tell we want your business. We offer all types of deposit products, personal and business. We have fast, efficient service, and yes, we have online banking too. I'm sure we have an account to fit your needs. Stop by or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. For FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings in Wayne County is a popular thing. To dine in or take you out for one delicious meal, and with the low great prices, it's simply a steal. Famous for the variety of sauces, mild, wild, and singer inferno. When it's time to eat lunch or dinner, Damon's Restaurant is the place to go. Located in the middle of town on West Cherry Street, yes, Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings simply can't be beat. So next time you're hungry and looking for a great meal, head to Damon's Restaurant and enjoy a great deal. The number to call is easy, 588-WING, 588-9464, the real thing. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, those chicken wings are a very popular thing. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. Hi, Wayne and surrounding counties. This is Sean O'Quinn with O'Quinn and Associates. The one constant in life is change. Throughout our lives, we will go down roads that we never imagined. I have decided that it is time for me to make a change. I have decided to start my own independent insurance agency. What does this mean for you? Better rates and multiple companies. Give us a call at our new number, 912-385-1000, or stop by and see us. We are still at 212 South 1st Street, and we look forward to serving you. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. The world famous Butch and Bob Show. World famous Butch and Bob show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup, Big Dog Country Radio. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. How's it going? Good. 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 Tiny big win last night. Need to. Yep, so they won. So did you tell me that uh, that uh, Warner Robins had a difficult time actually fielding a full, complete team this year? Did I hear you that in pregame, or was I, did I hear wrong? No, the coach was just complaining you only have 15 players. said he had all 15 players that played baseball in Warner Robins. 15 players? Yeah. Okay. Like that was a problem. You don't need nine. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> he was just, he's kind of a jerk. I'll give him a lot up early, but anyway. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Uh, I was just wondering about that. They were having a hard time filling field the team this year, but uh, they had 15 players, yeah, so they had plenty. Yeah. Their team's a lot better this year than it was last year. Yeah, apparently. They got a lot of football players out. So they're, they're, they're a decent ball club. Okay. All right. So a lot better than last year. You know, last year, you know, last couple, you know, last year we didn't, you know, weren't that much, but. Apparently a lot better this year. So we'll play 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 in one of Robins on Friday in a double header up there. Is that correct? Yeah, up in that dump of the ballpark. Okay, and then next week begins state playoffs for the varsity baseball team. Right. Looks okay. like either Jonesboro or Forest Park, but they have to they battled out this week, so it's still undecided on who the three and four teams are in that region. So, but that's okay. we cross over we cross over that Woodward Academy, Jonesboro, Forest Park. Okay, that region. So, but may not find out till. Late Friday night, but yep. as soon as we get the, over. since we get the details, we'll have it for you here okay. on sports. And has our region winner been decided yet? No, Coffee and Douglas are fighting out for one and two. I mean, it's Coffee and Ware. Coffee, Coffee and, and Ware. Ware. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, they played last night, but I didn't get a score. So. Yeah, so no, we'll see on that. Okay. All right. Well, we got a guest in here this morning. And, uh, Jim, how you doing? I've been doing good. Good. So, just... Doing nothing mostly, but <laughs> <laughs> Jim Poindexter here this morning. He's got he's got his hospice hat on this morning, and uh, how's it been going? You, you, I know that you're you know you're back helping hospice with this particular project, right? Yes, yeah, so, um, 
every year we have the uh, annual ride for hospice and uh and uh, they had they asked me to come in and help coordinate this event for them. And uh, well, we all know that you're so, a, you know you're a biker. You know you wear that black leather and you, <laughs> you wear the studs and stuff like that. You know you, you got the you got the skull cap bone, the leather jacket and stuff like that. So I can see why they bring that in. Yeah, we were in um, um, Harley Davidson over in Savannah yesterday. Mm-hmm. And it it really did. Uh, I've always wanted to ride, but never have. So. You never have. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, walking through there with all those nice Harleys laying sitting around, you know, man, it was good looking bikes. <laughs> they really are good looking so. bikes, and they just got that certain sound to them that you know it's a Harley. Oh yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So yeah. What, y'all over there uh, for what reason? It was, did it have anything to do with the, with the ride? Yes, okay. um, it was. Uh, we took some flyers over there uh, to put out on their bulletin board because okay. we get riders from you know Savannah. We get them from all over Southeast Georgia uh, coming into our ride. Okay. Uh, last year we had um, seventy-two bikes in our ride, and we would really like to top that this year. Okay, and, um, and when's the ride going to be? It's going to be May twenty-first. Also, oh, we still got a month. Then. Okay, May twenty-first, and and, um, and we'll meet at the um, at the Hospice location in their parking lot, and then so hospice um, on south on south. Uh, well, on uh, the, actually uh, on Sunset Boulevard, Sunset across Boulevard. from Bill Mars Park, okay. right? And then we'll um, we'll take off from there. About meet and registration starts at eight o'clock, and um, there'll be there'll be a light breakfast that'll be served, and then um, then we'll leave. Uh, kick stands up about uh, uh, ten o'clock. And then we'll do a ride. It's about a sixty-five mile ride. Uh, it's a nice, comfortable ride, and uh, and then end up back here in Jessup, and we'll have uh, hamburgers and hot dogs for lunch, and uh, and then um, we'll have um, uh, the raffle. It's a raffle run, so there is a it's draw. A raffle run. A raffle. A run. raffle one. Uh, yes. Yeah, a raffle run. Okay. <laughs> um, so um, the the riders will um, will be given a ticket when they register, and then there will be a draw. Going, and the winner will get a cash prize, and then there will also be individual drawings for merchandise that are that are being donated to us, and um, and so we we've gotten some really good uh, uh, really good gifts uh, to raffle off so far, so it's uh, it's uh, it, it's really nice, and uh, so we're still working on getting sponsors and gifts and. Uh, and we will be right up. So until I know the that on the these ride, runs, but, yeah, there's different things. There's poker runs, there's raffle runs, or all kind of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so they'll leave on uh, on that Saturday, May 21st, that morning. Mm-hmm. Will they have uh, that 65 mile run? Will they have stop point for anything? Yes, it, it's not a it's not a poker run. Right, but it's there, not a poker. There but. is a, a a a stop about halfway through that ride. Mm-hmm. Get off, stretch your legs a little bit. Right. Um, drink some water, or soda. Uh, coffee, whatever you know, right. and uh, and then we load up again. It is an escorted ride. Uh, the sheriff's department will provide uh, escort oh, good, good. front and rear to to, uh, and that always makes it nice. Makes it a little bit of a safer ride. Right. Uh, I don't right. have a lot of traffic weaving in and out of the the riders. So uh, so it it really does make it, it it nice. And the proceeds from our raffle run goes to uh, to help. With our improved and expanded uh, hospice care, uh, yeah, you know, right that, now we've got the in care facility being built right now. Being yeah. built right now, yes, and boy, is it going to be nice! And uh, how many beds will they have? I'm sorry how how many rooms beds? Do you know, I, I believe there will be eight. Eight, okay. yes. I, I believe that's a, I what I was told. Dream of the board of hospice for many many years, mm-hmm. and now finally you'll have you know basically care their own site there at hospice once that's completed. Yes, this is something that we've looked forward to since we had that building built out there. <laughs> and um, and it's really nice. The, the, the staff out there is incredible. Uh, Tony Ray has done and, and Jennifer Morris have done an incredible job putting the staff together. Um, and it's just, it, it really is an incredible program. And, uh, so uh, I don't know what I would have done if we hadn't with mom, if I hadn't had hospice in there to help out. So yeah, the same thing with my dad. Yeah. yeah so, so, it, 
So you got the raffle run coming up on May 21st. You're looking mm-hmm. for entries right now. So if you're a person, you, you got a motorcycle out there and you want to enter in this, it's $20 per bike, $5 per passenger. And uh, the proceeds goes to hospice, and you have a chance to win the, that big old raffle. And, of course, you got a chance to win the individual raffles for other prizes. Yes. And um, it's uh, it, it really is a, a worthwhile program, and we really encourage everybody to come out. This year we've op- extended the invitation not only to motorcycles but any street legal Vehicles. <laughs> street legal vehicles. Emphasis on street legal. Okay. Yeah, I was giving my friend Charles one year. He's, you know, he's got a Harley and I got a Schwinn. And I said, well, I guess I could just, you know, put a rope behind your Harley and you can just pull me on the Schwinn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a bike. It's just a bike. It's street legal. It's street legal. <laughs> so when you say any street legal uh, uh, vehicle, what are you thinking of? Well, we had some requests for people that wanted to to join in with a truck, with the family, uh, or a v or a car. Um, Maybe like a, you have these Jeep runs around Jeeps, here ever so often. They had one at yeah. Blythe Island several months ago, and yeah. so you could have Jeep runs like that, or maybe some of these. Um, uh, Maybe some of these uh, the different type of vehicles they use a lot off road, but still are street legal. They're still street legal. And that's yeah. true. Yeah, you just got to be able to go the sixty five miles. Okay. Right, right. So. Yeah. Some of those things can't go sixty five miles <laughs> straight like that, or and, don't have the speed for and, it. But if you and, can, do it and keep up with the traffic. That's what I mean. Keep up. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. well, good. So you don't even have the motorcycles. You'll have these other kind of outdoor type of vehicles that that folks can use to be yes. inside this uh, in in the raffle. Yes, that's true. In the raffle run for hospice. And, and Again, we are looking for sponsors. If you're interested in being a sponsor, we have three levels of sponsorship. Um, we have uh, bronze, silver, and gold. The bronze is $100 donation. Uh, the silver is 200 and the gold is $300 donations. Uh, we're also looking for um, gifts that we can actually raffle off to the to the masses, to the writers and right. families so as they come in. buy raffle tickets for these other prizes, buy right? Buy raffle tickets separately from yeah. the ride. And, um, and then the ride will be a big cash prize based on the amount of entries. The amount of entries, right. yes. Is that a 50-50, or how does that work, or is it a 30-40, or yeah, do you have a certain set amount and the rest yeah. of it goes to the hospice? In, in the past, we've done it as a 50-50. 50-50, okay. Yes. And uh, so... Um, it's uh, it's looking like uh, it's looking like it'll turn out to be a, a really good program. Uh, the uh, young man that uh, won it last year was uh, was really uh, in, enthusiastic about winning. <laughs> <laughs> he did not hold his excitement in, did he? Yes, that's true. But um, but if there's anybody out there that's interested in being a sponsor, it can be an individual. It can be a well, what does the person business? receive as a sponsorship? For the hundred, two hundred, three hundred. You know, if there's a business out there that wants to do that, what do they get for the the sponsorship? Yep. Other than a good feeling. Well, they'll get the the. We'll be doing articles for the paper. We'll be doing newsletters, and we'll be doing a, uh, some other things to get the word out to help them advertise their business and okay. for thanking them for their sponsorship. Do you have any sponsors and, yet? Yes, we do. Who are they? Do you know off the bat, off the hand? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. We, uh, uh, I tell you one that we just got uh, this week, and it was um, uh, the Strand Bistro and Chop House. Okay, Strand so, Bistro and Chop House. Yes. Okay, and uh, they're a they're a gold sponsor. Well, good, good. So they're uh, and they were. Really, really good about this too. So um, yeah, it'd be good for them to follow all this yeah, bike course, after course. the run's over with. Go by and have a have and, lunch or, or dinner there. I love that place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people do. Yeah. So, um, so it'll it it's really good. And um, we picked up some other items from um, Harley uh, yesterday, and um, and from uh, 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 another. Uh, Dealership, uh, not really a dealership, but a, a, a store over in uh, Hinesville okay. uh, that uh, does uh, repairs on uh, on uh, bikes, okay. and uh, they gave us a really nice vest. 
and uh, to to raffle off. Okay. And so, so this is the hospice raffle run, um, mm-hmm. bike run coming up on mm-hmm. Saturday, May twenty first. It'll start at Hospice of South Georgia here on Sunset Boulevard, across from Belmars Park. Registration at eight a.m. Kickstands up at ten a.m. About a sixty-five mile ride with one stop, and um, any food. I see. Yeah, separate raffle prizes. Breakfast and lunch provided. Yes. Okay. That's true. So breakfast there at hospice and lunch afterwards there at hospice? Um, or we're, is it going to be somewhere we're, else? We're working on that right now. But, okay. uh, you know, last year we ended up at the VFW. Oh, okay. So, and, yeah, that's, um, well, you have and, places for people to sit so, there yeah, in the kitchen. So, you, won't have, you don't have all that so at hospice. We're anticipating it being in the same place this year. Okay. And uh, so... Um, Still working out a few details on on it, but uh, okay. But, now what do people do if they want to enter their motorcycle or off their their vehicle into this uh, raffle run for hospice? All they have to do is show up. On, just show up. Just show up that just morning. Show registration. Up that morning. Registration. From 8 to 10. Okay. Yeah, registration will be that morning. So okay. And for more, it says for more information, you can contact these people. Caleb, there at hospice nine one two. Five eight eight zero zero eight zero five eight 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 five eight eight zero zero eight zero. That's Caleb there at hospice. And you is that your number? That's my number. Two nine four five three seven three. Two nine four five three seven three. Okay. And that's that's pretty that's much pretty it. Pretty much it. Yeah. All right. Well, if you need to come back on a May, is to do a wrap up this a couple weeks beforehand. Yes. Let's do it. All right. All right, Jim. Have a good day. All right. Thank you. 105.5 FM and Jess at Big Dog Country Radio. More of the world-famous Butch and Bob show in a moment. Here's your WIFO forecast. Sunny today, east winds gusting to 20, highs upper 70s. Then tonight, partly cloudy, becoming mostly cloudy, low 50s. Mostly sunny, 80 for tomorrow. Friday, sunshine highs mid 80s. Saturday, sunny, high mid 80s. Sunday, sunshine highs in the upper 80s. Monday, sunny, high of 90. Georgia Chief Meteorologist John Weatherby in the Georgia 811 Weather Center. Contact 811 before you dig. The life-changing devastation of infertility or the loss of a baby is too hard to walk through alone. The good news is you don't have to anymore. Find the support and community your heart has been craving at the Hope Narrative, a faith-based infertility support conference Saturday, April 30th at Wayne Christian Academy in Jessup. Get details and register online at hopenarrative.org. That's hopenarrative.org. Register online at hopenarrative.org. 105.5 FM and Jessa, Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO. And uh, 20 minutes after 8 o'clock here on this uh, Wednesday morning, 20th day of April. You know, the Braves won last night, uh, Bob, over the Dodgers. Rubber match this afternoon. Yep, on AM 1370 WLP. That's right. We'll have on our sister station. I want to congratulate the golf team. Again, they went to Lucas Grove yesterday for that regional meet. They won their region championship. Again, score 321. We've been talking about this golf team all season long. Again, very talented. Antonio Orbe had a low score of 77. Finley Burke, 78. Brett Malloy, 81. Aiden Jones, 85. Jacob Strickland, 89. Ashton Davis, 92. The team scored 333. Region champions. So, again, our congrats to those guys. And, Looking forward to them again being that state meet in May over at Okie Fidoki. So that, are they through right now until the state meet? No, they've, they've, got, won- they've got a couple more matches. Oh, they but, do? Okay. But the state meets uh, in Okie Fidoki May 16th and 17th. So, okay. But they've still got a few more. You say 16th and 17th. Is it a two-day tournament then? Yes, yeah, two-day event. Okay. All right. So that's state. So congratulations to the Wayne County golf team winning region. And they were 321. What was the nearest one after that? Ware County 333. Okay. So way to go, golfers. They're a talented group. Yeah, they are. They're fun to watch. Yeah, they are. And so uh, we wish them the best in the next two uh, uh, matches they have there, and especially for the um, state meet coming up um, in May. It's a big week at Wayne County, of course. Junior senior prom this weekend. So Mm -hmm. wish all the junior seniors out there a very happy, safe prom. Yep. It will be Saturday night. The theme is Masquerade. Masquerade. Well, the masks are coming off, and they're putting them back on. <laughs> and it'll be interesting to see how some of those kids dress up uh, in their masks. There's all different kinds out there, you know. And so um, we wish them the best, but have a safe, safe Saturday. I was never able to go to any junior senior proms because of uh, it's right in the middle of track season. Usually that weekend was like region track meet or 
Uh, I don't think state was ever the week of junior senior, but it was usually around region or something like that. So um, you know, you had that had that on Saturday. So yeah, and back then, of course, you know, junior senior prom was on Friday night, and it was here on Friday night for a long time. I can't remember how many years ago they changed it to Saturday. Maybe about fifteen years ago, something like that. They changed it from a Friday night to a Saturday because it, you know, that Friday just kind of interrupted the um, school day. So they changed it to Saturday. Saturday here in Wayne County many years ago, and that way the committee has all day Saturday to uh, get the get the uh, commons area all fixed up and not have to mess up uh, anything with uh, school day on that Friday. So junior, senior prom this weekend for Wayne County High School. And then you'll start soon having all that graduation stuff, you know, this this get together, that get together, and then honors night the night before graduation with major thousands of dollars worth of scholarships given out, and then graduation night. About to wrap up this 21-2022 school year. Just flown on by. Time flies when you having fun. I guess so. <laughs> That's what they say. I just know the older you get, the, the quicker time goes. Oh, That's yeah, all. it does. Yeah, the older you get, the quicker time goes. I tell for you all the time, you know, when I was in college, I had that three-hour lab, and I was like, man, is that three hours ever going to go? <laughs> Seemed like I, days. I don't have that. I don't have that problem at work. I mean, I wake up, next thing I know, I'm going to bed. That's right. <laughs> Day just flies by. I know sometimes I think I pass myself coming into the station in the morning at 520 and leaving, you know, late in the afternoon. And um, But uh, time does fly. It's just it's like a snowball. It just seems to go faster and faster and faster as you get older. And when you're young like that, it's just like it is. It just takes forever, you know. I see that. I remember sitting in those labs like, is that clock ever going to get to? That's just thing. <laughs> is it ever going to get, get over? Is this hour lecture ever going to end? <laughs> but don't have that problem these days. <laughs> Time flies. Okay, they got the NFL draft coming up soon, don't they? I think it's about 10 days away. Yeah, yeah. I know. I hear about a lot on Vegas, our AM so. station about it, uh, Fox Sports Radio. I'm excited for Georgia eight. fans to see where all those Georgia players go. There's going to yeah, be 12 be. or 14 of them going to be. And they, they say once that middle of the first round starts uh, – they say one of the Georgia players may go number one overall. Wow. Say, uh, that defensive. The Walker guys moving yeah. up the board. So Jacksonville, you know, for months they've been saying they're going after the offensive tackle Evan Neal, but now they're saying Jacksonville may switch and go to one of those defensive players from Georgia. So okay. it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. I was listening. Fun. We have the Chuck Oliver show back on our AM station now. We had a few months of uh, technical difficulties, but Chuck Oliver is back on AM thirteen seventy the Buzz WLOP between five and seven. And of course, Chuck Oliver is out of Atlanta. He talks about football all year, college football all year long, all year long. Talks college football, and he was talking uh, yesterday about you know where this um, uh, name likeness. What is it? Name, image, and likeness. NIL. NIL. Yeah, NIL. Uh, Coach Saban said basically you can buy players these days. You know, it's basically put players on the, the market where you just go out there and try to offer them more. You get boosters and other folks to to uh, give them more money with the NIL and you can just and with the uh the trans with the, 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 the portal now, you can do that. And remember in the past, and I don't know why they didn't stay with this, in the past, up until just what, two or three years ago. You couldn't go from one Division One to another Division One. You had to go down and then back up. You couldn't go from an Alabama to a Georgia, or a Georgia to Alabama. You know, but now you can do that. And I, to me, that really messes up everything because you can't actually recruit. They were talking about how Coach Kirby Smart has done this since he's been there, and people don't realize this. At Georgia, is you know you have eighty five scholarships that you can have, but he'll go off and give out a hundred and something scholarships, and then. The folks that the you know that didn't pan out after a couple of years, he just says, "Sorry, you're not on scholarship anymore," and he puts the the new ones in to get that eighty five. So he may he may have a hundred and something in scholarships, but those last ones drop off to get back down to the eighty five. So he over recruits because he knows some of the weaker ones. When I say weaker ones, some of the ones that are like third, fourth uh, level will no longer have scholarships anymore. Well, it's the wild, wild west. It is. It's the wild, wild west no, these days. There's no, there's no guidelines. There's no. They've opened it up know, like man, pro I mean, football now. You know, it's, it's whoever has the most money. That's I, I just don't think the about, one they're talking about Arch Manning, the number one quarterback out there, and they said that yeah. he's going to go where the whoever pays him the most money. I know. And they it's, say Texas is in the, the ranks because they got they got a bunch of money. They just shouldn't. Be, you shouldn't be able to go from from a Georgia to Alabama, Alabama, you know, Division One. 
to me, it seemed like they would still have to say, all right, I got to make that decision. You know, yeah, I can make more money, but I got to go back down to that lower level, then come back up. I don't think that you should have coaches going on one campus, another campus, trying to recruit players like that. I just, I liked it the way it was before. But now you got that transport portal, and they can go anywhere they want, anytime they want, wherever the money is. So it's all about the money for the players now in college well, football. Players want their right, you know, which I understand it. I mean, I'm in favor of them getting their rights. So no, I, I don't say, have any problem with the NIL. I, mean, I don't have any problem with that at all. It's I mean, going from one major I say college when, to when another. A, when a college coach comes in and recruits a kid and it tells me he's going to be there four years, then he also needs bails in the next school. So why should the kid not be able to bail? So mm-hmm. I, have, I don't have a problem with the kids moving from one school to the other. You don't have any problem with them going from, like, from Georgia to Alabama, Alabama, uh, Georgia? No. I just say they they got to find a way to corral this money situation because it's just – How do they do that? I because mean, you have the no, Supreme no Court who said that – they there's, can uh, there's nobody, do this. There's nobody. Like I said, there's no rules. There's no regulations. It's just highest bidder. So, yeah, it's basically the highest yeah. bidder now. You know, so, what players do you want to get? Uh, my question is, is it going to trickle down to the high school? Yeah. Uh, we need a third baseman. Let's go across the ground and get third baseman. We need well, a shortstop. We have to now. change the rules in each state. I mean, well, I'm just saying. Where's it stop? Uh, I don't know where it stops. I really don't. Uh, you know, but, you, like um, I said, you got a kid that, you know, some of these quarterbacks, before they step on the field, are, you know, multimillionaires. Yeah, they're making a lot of money. It was, they were talking last night. Is there any animosity among the other players? Like, what about the offensive right, guard? Right. What about the tackles? You know, so they said so far they haven't seen. Well, they shouldn't be because problem. if you've got the best yeah. quarterback sitting back there, or running back, or receive or receiver, or something like that, or a defensive lineman, that just makes the team better, which makes more winning, yeah. which means more success for everybody there. Yeah. Happy for a kid like Stetson Bennett. That's right. He went back. NIL's been very beneficial to him. Right. So he's making a lot of money. So happy for, you know. And I said, get what you can get. Right get now it's a free market. Yeah, yeah, it's a free market. It's we what said time, it's all it's about the money. Chuck Oliver was saying. He's the, Nick, Saban said you yeah. can, you basically you can buy players now. Well, he's not hurt. He's got plenty of money. Out of oh, yeah. He, he, he wasn't complaining. He was just saying that's the way it is no, now. Well, he was complaining. He was yeah. complaining. <laughs> he's out there buying players left and right. Yeah. He came and got Jermaine Burton from Georgia, so I mean, you need a receiver. So yeah, and, uh, but it's it's just the question is where does it go? Where does it end? How bad does it get? I, I don't. I know. Oh, the Coach Saban was also talking about um, the players that has gone pro since he's been in Alabama. He added up all their salaries that they've had for the what fifteen years he's been there, ten years, however long, twelve years he's been there, and it's it's in, it's in the billions. <laughs> It's like $1.8 billion or something like that that his players have earned in the NFL that played under him at Alabama. Saban's not hurt. He's got plenty of money, and he's still the preseason number one team in America. Yeah, well, he's not complaining. He's just saying it as it is. It's just wide open now. You can buy who you want to. And he was, of course, also talking about the success of his players there of earning big incomes in the NFL. And... You know, Georgia's had big success with that, and we're going to have more success with that this year with all these players going. So, um, uh, Wayne County is now uh, varsity baseball team has secured third place for state playoffs. They'll start playoffs next week, and our golf team won region yesterday. The varsity baseball team will be back in action, finishing out their regular season this Friday at Warner Robins in a region double header, and then start the state playoffs next year. And Braves baseball will be a midday game today at the rubber match between them and the Dodgers. Our coverage will begin about 2 o'clock with the leadoff show, first pitch at 310 on our sister station, WLOP 1370 AM, Fox Sports Radio. The good news for Braves fans, Ronald Acuna soon to be back in that lineup. He started his – they said that he's almost cleared to play. So okay. it would be good to get him back in that lineup. Okay. Well, Bob, you have a good day. Good. All right. World Famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO, brought to you by First Southern Bank, by Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, Murphy Builder Supply, and O'Quinn Associates.